I grew up in um, a church where uh, I wasn't really challenged with my faith. Um, so for me, being a Christian was um, just, you know, not having sex before marriage and not swearing and just kind of being a good person. And I was very apathetic towards the fact that the person I was dating um, was playing around with drugs. Um, and, you know, we were living in sexual sin. It just didn't really bug me very much. Um, um, he actually was um, removed from residence for drug possession um, and was brought to a, a homeless shelter in downtown Hamilton. So from there on, I was basically going back and forth on weekends to, to see him, to um, bring him to church, which he started doing. Some weekends I was partying, some weekends I was doing worship at church, um, very much living a very double lifestyle. He was struggling with a lot of stuff on the side, just homelessness and still involved with drugs, a lot of stuff that I wasn't really aware of. Um, it kind of became my mission to save him. And I, obviously I know that that's not possible, but in my head I just thought if he comes to church enough. Um, if I cry in front of him enough, if I, you know, all these things, if I love him enough, you know, maybe, maybe there will be a chance that he'll become a Christian and we can make this work and it'll be fantastic. God will do something so great. It was a year later that something happened, which uh, he decided to go into rehab. Um, and he was there for a month. We kind of broke up and, um, but still determined to make it work. And he was in rehab. He finished rehab, I think like a month or so after he got out, we got back together, he relapsed, he was jumping from uh, shelters to friends' couches, um, his parents never really let him stay at home, when he messed up he was out, and again, just I was so driven, it became my idol, my life to just fix him, to save him. That continued on for about, I think, another year, but it was in 2015, um, I was pretty foolish and posting all the stuff that I was doing, like partying and drinking and all these things, just all over social media <laughs> while still being on the worship team. But at the same time, I genuinely loved doing worship. It was like such a fun weekend. I love singing. Um, so when they asked me to take a break due to these multiple reasons, um, I was like devastated. Uh, it completely broke me. Um, and I think that was when I started to really like face um, how I was living and you know the person that I was dating and, and um, was this relationship I was supposed to be. And I think I started really understanding, you know, just being equally yoked. And, uh, I didn't really get that before. Um, I think it was just a couple months later. Um, there was an argument. He was living at my house at the time, actually, um, with my family. Got into an argument and um, broke up. It was after that that I actually started going into like a really deep depression. I was in a super dark place. If you were to see me then, like I'm tiny now, I was half the size then. I was like, I was unhealthy, I was stressed, I was depressed, I was anxious 24 7. I had times of feeling suicidal. Um, I just, my whole life was consumed by this person. When you put someone on a pedestal above God and it takes over your life like that, um, it doesn't end well. So my mind went to crazy places to try to get him back. I turned into someone that I do not ever want to see again. I think it was in October 2015 that I finally just like completely broke and I remember just being in my room that night and just like bawling uncontrollably and I just went on my computer and started emailing and signing up for like anything and everything at Harvest. Um, like I was like, I need counseling, I need help. Like I never wanted to do counseling, but I was like, I need help. Like I cannot continue doing this on my own. Um, oddly enough, I don't know if counseling responds always right away, but they did respond right away. Um, and I think it was a couple weeks later, I was starting to see a counselor, a biblical counselor at the church. And it was through that counseling that my relationship with God really started to come to life. Um, counseling ended, and it was a couple months after counseling ended. In that time, I 
still was trying to kind of reconnect with my ex-boyfriend. Um, I definitely didn't let that piece of, piece of my life go, hadn't surrendered it yet, um, wasn't able to move on. Stuff started happening in my family um, and my dad moved out. Um, that was really hard too, obviously for me. Um, I grew up, I was really close with my dad. We had a really strong relationship, so to find out what we found out and then him leaving um, and that relationship being completely broken. Um, I just felt like, you know, I lost this person that I love so much, uh, my boyfriend, and then I lost my dad. It's like the two men in my life um, were gone, so that was really hard. And it was just like, I really, I was in a tough place, and again, just back into depression, back into this constant feeling of anxiety. Um, God was just so, so much trying to um, pull at me and get me to refocus on Him. And I think it was around that time I started reading the book of Hosea. I think it's chapter 6. Um, the first couple of verses just um, saying, Come return to me. Um, and how He breaks us down but um, builds us up. And I didn't, I didn't blame God for the state that I was in. I understood in my in my heart that he was allowing me to go through this brokenness so that I would turn to him, I would be built back up in him, but I just wasn't really willing to um, let him fully build me back up yet. It was like, okay, God, you can have this part of me, you can have this part of me, you can, I'll surrender everything to you, but I'm not surrendering this guy. I, I'm not surrendering him until you fix him, until you save him, <laughs> and we're together forever. So. And that was obviously the one piece that he wanted the most. Um, I was connected with someone in the church who told me about where he was working, which was Young Street Mission in Toronto. Had no idea about them, no idea about what they did. Um, he just said, oh, you can volunteer. Like I mentioned, I wanted to get in the field, work with youth, work with this population, um, marginalized street involved, people struggling with drugs and addictions and those kind of things. So I was working full time in Burlington and going once a week and volunteering at a drop-in center in Toronto working with this population. Um, and the only experience I had was personal life experience. Um, so that was really all I had to offer and it was just like such an eye-opening experience for me. Um, six months later I started, I was a relief staff, casual staff, so I was working a little bit more there. Um, but still really struggling. Hey God, where, what do you want with my life? Where do you want me? Should I be going back to school? Like, am I ever gonna get a job out of this? Like, is this where I'm supposed to be? All the questions. Um, and I just kept feeling him saying like, be patient, be patient, be patient. I just started realizing more and more God's purpose and all of it and just what I was, what I've been through and how I can help the youth. So that position opened up and um, I decided to go for it, just an act of faith. It was like two, one or two days before the closing day. Someone of my members said, just apply for it, just apply for it. Um, so I did, and I ended up getting that job as an employment counselor. So um, that was a big thing for me because I worked at Starbucks for eight years, and then I was starting this kind of like a career. And I'm like, whoa, God, like, I think one day it just hit me that I kind of went back to the time when I was studying biblical counseling. Um, and really just praying, like, you know, um, where, what do you want from my life? Where do you want me in terms of, um, of working career-wise? And are you gonna, can I do a job that is in social work, but also in uh, the faith and uh, Christian um, organization? And how can you mix the two? Um, and this is a Christian organization I now get to work in and serve the population that I've always wanted to serve, which is, um, youth struggling with these different things so I think it just hit me one day like whoa I used to pray for this um, whoa this person in the church set me up like God's plan just over the two years to set me up to this point and um, I used to think you know I want to do the Christian side and the social work side and it's not very many organizations that are Christian based um, that serve these populations so I think one day it just struck me like oh my goodness God answered prayer from two years ago he's so faithful um, and he heard that and he and his timing is just so perfect do you love him <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> he, i can't even imagine where i would be without him